Welcome back friends. Welcome to another video tutorial from Shomu's Biology. And in this video lecture, we'll be talking about the difference between MHC class 1 and MHC class 2. We've been talking about that thing uh, for a long time. Major histocompatibility complex. Major histocompatibility complex 1 and major histocompatibility complex 2. Now, the whole idea about the MHC based on the transplantation of different tissue and organ from one individual to the next. Now what happens actually when you transfer some organ and tissue from one individual to the other individual, uh, that, that, that recipient individual have a tendency of rejecting that tissue graft. Why they reject the tissue graft from, from a different donor? The answer for that is the donor is a different person. So anything from the body of donor according to the recipient is a foreign material which is non-self material. So what is the difference and what thing distinguish between a self and a non-self material? How could immune system cells know what is a self molecule and what is a non-self molecule? For that we need to understand about the cell surface molecules or cell surface receptors and proteins. One of that protein is major histocompatibility complex. Now, if you look at here, the cells contain some surface specific proteins. That protein are known as this major histocompatibility complex. Now, that protein can either process some foreign antigen and present it outside or that protein can process self molecule and present it outside. Depends on the situation and depend on the type of cell where they are doing this. So, based on this, they are known as a major histocompatibility complex because this complex are specific to recognize a type of pathogen. They do not recognize the other types, they recognize a specific foreign particles and then only they will interact because once this MHC gets activated uh, and present some pathogen or portion of pathogen that is an antigen outside to the rest of the immune system cells, T cells can recognize that. And T cell can activate some more T cells, it can also activate B cell and a whole lot of immune system and immunity that will start secreting antibodies against that pathogen or antigen. That is the whole story of, of the idea. So that is why these surface proteins, they are very necessary and important for the compatibility of transplantation of tissue grafts. That is why they are known as major histocompatibility complex. Now let's move to the structure of this complex and some fact about this complex first the beginning. Then we go and talk about the difference in much more details. Now MHC molecules, they are nothing but a protein molecule. They are protein chains that are present in the surface of the membrane. So they are membrane embedded proteins. Because if you look at here the structure of MHC 1 and 2, both of them, they have an anchorage in the lipid membrane. Okay. While MHC class 2 have two such anchorage, MHC class 1 have only one anchorage, but they have the attachment embedded inside the membrane. And they have a specific region for both of them that is known as a peptide binding cleft where the antigen is attached. Where it could be the self antigen or processed one or it could be uh, the bacterial or any foreign pathogen antigen. This MHC normally present on the arm of chromosome number 6. And there are different genes that code for different MHC molecules or MHC protein. For example, for MHC class 1, three genes HLA-A, B and C code for this MHC1. While for MHC class 2, there are HLA-D that codes for, uh, for those different protein chains for making MHC class 2. Now let's look at the difference between the MHC and different aspects and different uh, properties. The first difference that we are talking about is between the composition of this MHC complex. In class 1 MHC, if you look, they have polymorphic structure, they have an alpha chain and a beta 2 microglobulin chain. This is a complete alpha chain as you can see and this is a small fragment known as a beta 2 microglobulin chain. Now this, this proteins or peptides are very resembling the structure with the immunoglobulins. So we call them microglobulin because they are very similar with that immunoglobulin protein family. Now the idea of making this MHC in such a way that they can present some portion of antigen outside the rest of the immune cells. 
That's why they need to have a specific binding cleft known as a peptide binding cleft or antigen binding cleft. And that is true for both of them. But for MAC class 1, it is only anchored once in the membrane with the help of this alpha terminal. Beta is not anchored. But if you look at the class 2 MHC, this is also polymorphic, but it has two complete chain, one alpha and beta. In case of class 1 MHC, we have alpha chain that is complete, but beta is an incomplete chain. But in class 2, we have both complete. And it also have this peptide binding cleft where the peptide like the antigen which is processed can be showcased outside. The second difference is a type of antigen presentation. The whole idea about this MHC is to present antigen to the rest of the immune system cell so that they can be alerted once any pathogen enters. Class 1 MHC, the job for class 1 MHC is that it is present to all the nucleated cell in our body. Every single nucleated cell have this class 1 MHC. So, if required, they can present some part of their self peptides anytime they require. But for class, class 2 MHC, this is only present to very specific type of cells known as antigen presenting cell or APC. Example, macrophage, dendritic cell. B cells. Now, because this MHC class 2 is the only type of surface protein that can process and attach foreign pathogen or fragments of foreign pathogen with this MHC class 2. They can only process this foreign pathogen and showcase that to the rest of the immune system cells. So, if you want to showcase a pathogen, you need to have MHC class 2. So, you need to be antigen presenting cell. But for class 1, it's the only idea. It's required when the cell is not feeling well. So, let's say you are a cell. You are not feeling well. You see a virus is infecting you. So, you are not feeling well. You want, you don't want to uh, stay like that. You want to get killed by yourself so that you can prevent the spread of that virus to the nearby cells. In that case, you will take a fraction of that fragment of the, of the, of the, of the virus or of the pathogen. You showcase that to, to, to the cytotoxic cell of our body, they recognize that and they will kill you by the process of apoptosis. So, MHC class 2, MHC class 1 uh, induces apoptosis and it, it activates cytotoxic killer cells, while MHC class 2 influences the activation of T helper cells, which can in turn activate the B cell. The third difference is the responsive cluster of designation protein that are found on the surface of this. So, CD or cluster of designation is a very common surface proteins that are found in all the different types of immune system cells. And among the T cells, because MHC always involve and interact with a T cell. Now, the T cell are different types. There are two varieties of T cell, CD4 T cell and CD8 T cell. MHC class 1 always engage in interaction with CD8 T cell. CD8 T cells are cytotoxic in nature. So, they can detect the presence of MHC class 1 so providing some antigen. It will engage in interaction and those cytotoxic T cells start release some chemical factors known as perforins, granzymes. Perforins will create pore in the cell. Granzymes will take entry inside the target cell and it will start killing that cell by the mechanism of apoptosis. While the MHC class 2 is recognized by the T cell with the help of CD4 receptor. Because normally the interaction between a T cell and antigen presenting cell or T cell with any MHC is brought about with the MHC and T cell receptor or TCR. That is the most common interaction that should be present. But that interaction is confirmed and that interaction is properly identified by either CD8 or CD4. Now, if that interaction is identified with CD8, it will provide the killing signal. If it is identified with CD4, it will provide the signal to rest of the immune system cells and B cells to get activated. Now, if you look at the difference in the mechanism of their activity, I just told you. Let us say here, we have a virus or tumor cell 
growing in this normal cell. This is a normal body cell. It says a virus entered inside. So what they will do? They try to prevent that effect of virus infection to the nearby cells. So the best way is to kill that cell. It's the cell's duty to flag itself that I am infected and it will do that with the help of MHC class 1. So viral particles are chewed with the help of proteasome complex inside. It will produce antigenic peptide fragments which is loaded into the MHC class 1 and then MHC class 1 is stored back to the surface of that cell. So now that cell is representing fragment of that viral particle showing rest of the immune system cells. Now this is MHC class 1 which can be determined or identified by CD8 T cell. So CD8 T cell will come and it will interact with that MHC class 1 with the help of TCR. CD8 molecule properly engage this interaction and confirm this interaction and then CD8 start releasing perforins and granzymes that will ultimately cause the apoptosis and this target cell will be cleaved. Not cleaved actually it will be uh, like uh, dead, it will be killing. Okay. On the other hand, if you look at the class 2 activity, in this case, let us say an exogenous antigen take entry. It is not the endogenous, it is not the infected thing. Some other pathogen is present. Now, this cell itself targetedly engulf that antigen inside because let us say this is a phagocytic cell. For example, this is a macrophage. So, its job is to engulf those target, those pathogens. So, it will engulf that pathogen inside. It will break those fragments of the pathogen down inside the endosome. It will fuse the lysosome with uh, the endosome so that the acidity can help in cleaving the fragment of the pathogen. Now, such fragment of the pathogen will be loaded on surface of MHC class 2 molecule and then they will be processed and properly placed on the surface of that antigen presenting cell because it is an antigen presenting cell. So once now they present the antigen, the whole process here is pre-planned. The whole process is to engulf a pathogen, break it down, showcase to other cell of immunity and that cell will be CD4 T cell because this is a class 2 MHC which is recognized by CD4 T cell. So the interaction will be between CD4 T cell receptor and the MHC class 2. Now CD4 can properly interact and confirm this reaction and then it will start telling the CD4 to release some cytokines. So once they release cytokines like interleukin 2, interleukin 4, 5 and so many different interleukins they will start releasing. Some of this interleukin, interferon also they will start releasing. Some of these interleukins will tell this macrophage to bring some more macrophage there. And some of this interleukin like interleukin 4 will activate B cells. So here you see they start building the immune response. They start building the cellular mode of response along with that humoral mode of immune response or antibody mediated immune response as well. By that fashion, they can start it. So to have these two process have completely different outcome. The job of CD8 T cells with the, with the MHC1 is to kill one infected cell, to clear the street. But the job of CD4 T cell engaged with MHC class 2 is to involve and activate the immune system. So there are lots, let us look at some of the other uh, differences. One is the source of the protein antigen. The, for class 1 MHC, this is a cytosolic protein. It could be the fragment of a virus that take entry into the target cell. Or it could be like uh, if it is a tumorous cell, it start producing so many uh, specific proteins for only produced by tumor cells. Those things can also be taken as an antigen and they can showcase that with MHC1. While in case of class 2 MHC, the whole source of this protein is exogenous because it should be a phagocytic cell, it should engulf uh, the pathogen from outside with the help of this endosomal or endosomal lysosomal fusion. Enzyme responsible for the peptide generation for case of, in case of class 1 MHC, these are cytosolic proteasome that break uh, the fragments down and to produce uh, the different peptide fragment. In case of class 2 MHC, 
there are also endosomal lysosomal protease that can do that. In case of MHC1, we saw earlier, it's the proteasome that develops the fragment. But in case of class 2 MHC, it is the fusion of lysosome with the endosome to break the fragments down. Site of this peptide loading, the peptide is loaded in the endoplasmic reticulum in case of class 1 MHC. Where in case of class 2 MHC, they have a specialized vesicular compartment for that. Uh, it's also the whole process is going on inside that vesicle and then the vesicle will fuse to the membrane and they will showcase that antigen. The molecules involved in the transporting of the peptide loading to the MHC complex. In case of class 1, it's a transporter tap that will help uh, to transfer of those peptide fragments from the cytosol inside the endoplasmic reticulum. While in case of class 2 MHC, it is the invariant chain that is present occupying some part of this uh, MHC class 2 structure. If I go back to the last slide, it will be much clearer to understand the process of antigen breakdown. Here you see specialized compartment, here it is with the tap, here it is with clip and specific compartments again. So that is all about the different types of uh, those MHC1 and 2. And finally, the functionality that we always talked about. The functionality for cytotoxic T cell is to kill the target cell. The functionality of uh, this class 2 MHC is to involve with as many as different types of T cells that they can activate or other antigen presenting cells they can activate and also they will activate immune system that is the job. Activate immune system that is the job of MHC class 2 interactions. So that in a sense is uh, the structure, function and the differences of major histocompatibility complex 1 and major histocompatibility complex 2. If you like this video, please hit the like button, share this video with your friends and definitely subscribe to my channel to get more and more interesting videos like that. Thank you.